I'd like to very warmly welcome you to this webinar in this in these very strange times uh, and um, focusing on, uh, as this first slide says, something a bit different, uh, particularly for our year uh, 11 students into the future. Uh, my name is Cathy Larkin. I'm the principal of Cath West Innovation College. And with us tonight, we have our two assistant principals, Sam Borum and John Wills, and also our head of mission, uh, Thomas Hunter, and you'll meet them shortly. So uh, just by way of introduction, this is actually our third webinar. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a webinar about, if you like, all things Cath West uh, to introduce all our pathways and both our campuses. Uh, then last week, we introduced a brand new pathway at Cath West, and that's a year 12 standalone pathway. So students in year 11 right now who think that they might um, want to pursue something different, and then they can actually commence year 12 at Cath West next term. Uh, so if you want to uh, check out either of those webinars, they're on um, uh, uh, YouTube. If you uh, go from there through our social media platforms as well, you'll find various links. So tonight, um, our focus is really on year 11, on both our pathways. So any students who, who are in year 10 or below uh, and their families who are looking for something different. Two key uh, phrases that we use about Cath West. Yep, school done differently that you see there. And also a workplace of learning. At Cath West, what we want to accelerate our students in is in regard to opportunities in the workplace. And you're going to hear more about that tonight uh, for, the, for our senior years. So um, a few other key features, uh, flexibility. So when it comes to um, the way in which we use time, uh, the way in which we engage with our students about their learning, uh, our learning spaces, you'll see that there is a lot of flexibility in all those features uh, of Cath West. Uh, and um, finally, uh, just by way of introduction, all of this is to enable our students to pursue their future goals, but actually bring them forward right now uh, so that um, they are very well set up. It's a case of integrating uh, their work at school with their, with their work beyond school to really set them up well when they are uh, leaving school. So I'd now like to um, introduce Thomas who is going to do our acknowledgement of country. Thanks, Thomas. Thank you, Cathy. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I would like to acknowledge the Darug people who are the traditional custodians of this land here in Western Sydney. We acknowledge the people who have loved and cared for this land for thousands of years. We would also like to pay respect to elders of the Darug nation both past and present, and extend that respect to other Aboriginal people present here with us this evening. And we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord God, as we consider our future, open our eyes, minds, and hearts to see and know you in all that we experience and all that we hope for. Guide us in our decisions, accompany us on our journey, and gift us with peace, hope, fulfilment, and joy. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thanks very much, Thomas. So just to give you a bit of an idea of uh, this evening's webinar, uh, we'll go for up to an hour. We'll see how long it takes. And... Um, Along the way, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to use the Q&A facility at the bottom of your screen uh, to ask those. We will have time at the end of the webinar to answer those, but I'm hoping we can actually answer them uh, along the way uh, as they are relevant to the various features that we um, introduce you to in terms of learning at Cath West. So um, with our year 11 um, pathways, there are essentially two. The trade pathway, in fact, has existed for many years, up to 12 years at the McCarthy campus and a little bit less at uh, the Loyola campus, part of other schools. They've now come together to form Pathwest Innovation College. 
the new thing that came with Cath West uh, was the Year 11 Inquiry Pathway. And so you're going to learn a lot more about uh, both of those pathways uh, and um, also sort of see what our next steps would be in terms of next week's webinar and in terms of uh, prospective inquiries, enrolments, et cetera. You can see here uh, a couple of images of our two sites, uh, one at Loyola in Mount Druitt and McCarthy campus at Emu Plains. So Loyola campus offers uh, the year 10 inquiry pathway, year 11 trade, year 11 inquiry, year 12 trade and year 12 inquiry. The McCarthy campus uh, will for next year be starting with year 10 uh, with a trade readiness program. If you want to find out more about that, please join next Tuesday night's webinar. Uh, and also at McCarthy campus, we have year 11 and 12 trade pathway offered. Okay, thanks, Thomas. So we're going to uh, have a little bit of a sense of, um, of some sound and images from Cath West. Thank you. There's a full commercial kitchen. There's different like tripods, cameras, lighting. This is all freshly built. So like, you know, it's new, it's refreshing. I've always had like a passion to working with my hands. It's like, I feel most comfortable in a setting like that. When they tell you to take stuff apart and put them together. And then when you put it together properly, it feels pretty cool knowing that you've done a good job. Practical based learning is very important to these students and I think that's where they do shine and it's where things all, all start to come together for them. Seeing that we had a green screen room and that we had 3D printers was like this is where I need to be to create my dreams. I felt this for her personality, she would actually excel and she's actually exceeded my expectations. Craig has showed me how to use all these other technologies and that's helped me design heaps more stuff. They appreciate what I do. It's different. They're teaching differently. They're more catered towards you and they help you personally. You kind of treat like an adult. It makes you really want to work hard and be there. Here at Catholic, we want very much to focus on the, the voices of the students. What is it that drives them? How can you think about what it is that you want to do in the future and start now? They can get me basically opportunities wherever I want to go beyond high school. If you come to them with an idea, they will help you and make you achieve your goal. As soon as I came here, everything has changed. My grades have been going up. It's amazing. If it wasn't for CAF West, I couldn't know where my future was. I know where I'm going because of CAF West. It's allowed me to finally do what I want to do. You always want your children to succeed. I know now that he's going to be given the right tools to work out the best path for, for him. It makes me want to come to school every day because they've just given me so much, give myself a better opportunity in life. I'm excited about my future now. So I would like to introduce you to one of our assistant principals, uh, John Wills, assistant principals, principal for industry and workplace learning, who will take us now through some of the key features of the trade pathway. So John, uh, unmute and away you go. Thanks, Kathy, for that reminder. Um, yeah, thank you very much um, for everyone's attendance this evening. And it's a, with great pleasure that I'm able to um, I suppose, outline the, the trade pathway that has been, as Cathy said, going for around 10 to 12 years now uh, in the Diocese of Parramatta. Um, as you can see on that slide there, it's, you know, hopefully this is something that might appeal, appeal to you. Um, you know, number one, are you in year 10? It's, and you are looking for something uh, for year 11, or you might be even younger and that's fine. And just knowing what is available when you get to senior school. It doesn't have to be what is currently in your school now. Um, so this might be something you're working towards um, when you get to years 11 and 12. Um, you know, but it's essentially, as, as we've got there, in year 10, um, are you moving, looking to move into year 11 and you're not 
you know you don't want to go to university, so an ATAR isn't something you're striving for. Um, are you really keen to get into the workforce? Um, and would you like to get paid and earn money while you're still at school? Um, and that's what I suppose I'm going to talk to you about, how you can commence an apprenticeship or a traineeship whilst you're still at school. And most importantly, uh, have lots of hands-on learning in a pretty flexible learning environment. Uh, so that's essentially what I'll be outlining. And um, thanks, Thomas. I'll get you to move on to our next slide. So um, what I suppose is the greatest strength of the trade training pathway at, at Cath West can sometimes be seen as, as a bit of a weakness. There's not lots of choice um, around bits and pieces at, at Cath West. We've taken on a lot of learning uh, before the trade training centres, um, I suppose, existed. We, we looked at what was working with school-based apprenticeships and traineeships and what wasn't working. Uh, and it was really crucial that we came up with a... Um, a subject package that would support students in the workplace and also at school. So whilst there's lots of choice, there's lots of um, options available for trades and, and vocations and careers you can get started in, there's not much choice when it comes to the subjects that wrap around um, what you'll be studying. But that has been done on purpose um, for you. And I'll, I'll explain why as we move through some of these slides. So obviously we're a Catholic school and that's in our, our name, Cath West. Um, and so uh, part of that is a, a commitment to studying religion or, or mission as we refer to it at Cath West. Uh, English is compulsory for the HSC. So our students all study uh, English studies in the, um, in the trade pathway. Mathematics, uh, as you'll probably agree, is really important to all jobs. Uh, and we've had lots of feedback from industry over the years. And when you know, the, the trades pathway started off, Many years ago, not every student did study maths, but as time went on and more engagement with industry and employers, uh, we've seen the, the, the need for that to, to continue. And there's a big push out there anyway for that to become compulsory in, in the HSC in coming years anyway. Uh, another subject um, students get to study, and, it, and, it, and I'll talk more about this one, it, it really is uh, embedded in what the students do week to week and and that's industry-based learning and recognising time students spend in, in industry. But, and I suppose um, what, as a companion subject to the students' trade areas or vocational areas is the certificate. Um, it's got their certificate two in business uh, and that's the minimum qualification students could be leaving with is a, a certificate two in business. Um, and I would, uh, it looks like moving forward um, students will have the opportunity to all achieve a certificate three in business and that will assist students if they, um, well they won't be students, when they are fully fledged um, professionals and, and tradespeople, but they'll be able to run their own businesses uh, and, and that's a course that um, is just great for all students to do no matter what jobs they do into the future and you'll hear the term bandied around transferable skills, that's I think the, the course at Cath West all our students do. Um, that probably offers the most transferable skills amongst different industry areas. So I'll come back to the importance of why we selected those subjects in a moment. Um, but essentially, um, all our students, when they go into the trade training pathway, get to spend a whole day focusing on that particular trade choice. And the training that, that we do, and we'll be looking at some of the facilities later, is primarily done on our, our campuses except where we've had to expand into to other offerings um, where students might attend TAFE or other training organisations. But primarily, um, and, and you'll see that the wonderful facilities we have at both campuses, um, the students are able to access the trade training on, on campus. Thanks, Thomas. Okay, so that big list of subjects that you get no choice in, there's a, one of the main reasons is we wanted to select subjects that had no HSC exams attached to them. Um, we can see in the setup of, of the program, we could see um, if you're not going for an ATAR and primarily those exams are there uh, for students to um, get an ATAR score so they can go to university, why put everyone through the stress of having to do the HSC exams? Uh, it does change the way we are able to teach. The learning is very different at Cath West. Uh, school done differently. The learning's different because the teachers don't have that pressure of preparing you for an exam at the end of, of the HSC year. Um, they really can go through the syllabus 
uh, work out what are the things that are really important to you and are going to help you in finishing off, off your trade or moving into other careers. Um, it takes a lot of pressure off, off the teacher and gives a lot more freedom into what can be explored in the classroom. So that's why those subjects were picked because they don't have compulsory exams attached to them um, for one, yeah, it's one of the reasons. And obviously the rest I went through why they need to be done, um, but essentially it's to um, ensure the students are leaving year 12 um, with, a, with a, a whole heap of extra skills uh, that align, align to their work. Um, the structure is really important as well. I spoke about a bit of flexibility that's available. Uh, so school is, is quite different. Students are on campus three to four days a week. Three days uh, are focused on those subjects that we had on the, the previous slide. Um, one day is then dedicated to trade training. And the, the fifth day of the week, uh, and not that it necessarily runs in, in order of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, but the fifth day is assigned to, uh, for students to be able to work as school-based apprentices or trainees. And I'll go into a bit more detail about what that means in a, in a moment. But essentially, it's either completing a full qualification with, in, in, if it's a traineeship whilst you're at school with workplace experience, or if it's an apprenticeship, it's where you're completing, you know, you hear people referred to a first year apprentice, second year apprentice, third year apprentice. It's completing that first year whilst you're still at school and gaining your HSC. And I will talk a little bit more about that in a moment. And then over on that third box there, you can see a list of, of, of the trades and, and vocational areas that we offer. Uh, I'm not going to read them all out to you. You can see it's quite, quite comprehensive. But one thing I will say, we will support students to you know, try and get a, a traineeship or an apprenticeship in, in anything where it's available. Uh, and sometimes we are limited to what um, TAFEs or other training organisations can offer us. But if you know there's a, an apprenticeship um, or a traineeship available uh, in the general public to, to anyone, there's a very good chance that can be a school-based apprenticeship or a traineeship. The only thing you need to do there is we need to have that job uh, the traineeship or apprenticeship all lined up before the commencement of the school year when it comes to trades that probably aren't, you know, that aren't on that list there. So that list is pretty much things you can start the school year off with without an apprenticeship or a traineeship. Thanks, Thomas. So apart from only having to come to school three to four days a week, um, you also only need to come to school eight weeks, uh, a minimum of eight weeks each school term. We stop school for two weeks every school term at, at a minimum, and you are out there working full time with your employer. It means you are breaking up that school year again. And that's uh, the subject we referred to industry based learning. That's the, a two unit subject. So every two weeks you're spending in, in um, the workplace plus one day a week, that's all contributing to a subject called industry based learning. And, and you recognise for the time you spend out, out at work. So, um, yeah, so it's, a, it's, a, it's not a bad deal. Uh, school for three to four weeks each, uh, three to four, sorry, days each week, and then only being there eight weeks each term. Uh, you know, students really find it quite manageable and they're able to combine that with their industry experiences, getting paid to be at work and all those things. So, which leads on to the next one about the school-based apprenticeships. So, essentially, as I explained, you um, are completing these qualifications whilst you're at school, but you're also employed with an employer um, who uh, has to pay you as either a, a trainee or as a first year apprentice. Uh, so, you know, I, I look out in the car parks of our campuses and I see some quite nice cars there. And that's, you know, students have, um, you know, they've earned that. It's not like, you know, mum or dad or their uncle or auntie or someone's given them a nice car. Uh, they've actually been doing hours, saving up money and, and, and driving around some, some quite, quite good vehicles. I, I know of students that, you know, within a year or two of graduating year 12 are buying their first investment property. So, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's amazing how much money can be earned one day a week plus an extra two weeks every term, what, what, what um, students are able to save up and, 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 and work on. Um, in a moment, we're going to go through our... Um, facilities and I was just going to talk a bit more about the type of student we're trying to attract into the trade training pathway um, but there's another bit there about our skills passport and that's I think what gives the students at Cathwest the edge 
over everyone. Um, and some people go, oh, why are you not getting an ATAR? You know, oh, is that, that a good HSC? Is it not? Well, I think the skills passport is um, something that faster passes any ATAR score. And Sam will go through that in a bit more detail. So I won't, rather than both of us um, going over the same thing. Um, but I'll just say it is, you know, a very, really important part of Cathwest uh, for every single student, no matter what pathway they're on. Thanks, Thomas. So as I'm talking now, Thomas will take you through some of the great facilities uh, across our campuses. And um, you can see you are learning in real state-of-the-art workshops. Um, this isn't just your average high school woodwork room. Uh, it, you know, there's lots and lots of uh, um, great machinery, up-to-date machinery and, and equipment that you will see, and they do simulate workplaces. So Thomas will probably scroll through those a bit as I talk a bit more the type of student we're after in the trade pathway. And I often referred to the trade pathway as, uh, and, and Cath West, it's a little bit of a selective school for tradies um or people that want to get into vocations so um well you have people that go down a, a strong academic route that know they're going to university will go and select selective schools to try and get their best score cath west can offer that same thing for people that know they want to get into a particular trade or vocational area um, so we're after committed students that know what they want to do cath west isn't uh, it's not a try trade uh, the schools in New South Wales, and particularly in the Parramatta Diocese, offer great options when it comes to vocational education and giving you a taste of what different industry areas are like. But for the trade pathway, this is for students that know, this is what I want to do. I want to be a chef. I want to be a hairdresser. I want to work with kids in early childcare. I, I want to be a fabricator, uh, whatever it is. So this is for students that know what they want to do. They may have done work experience. and I know that's been difficult this year. Um, but people that are, you know, you've, you've spoken to relatives, you've done some investigation, you're really sure this is the, the career you want to get started in. And, and I'll make a point on it's a career you want to get started in. The data is showing us all that, you know, your generation, those students now in, in year 10, you're going to have up to 21 jobs across seven industry areas. So this is just the start, but we're wanting people that are ready to make a start, but make a commitment to finish something as well. Um, so. You're not just signing up when it comes to an apprenticeship. You're not just signing up for years 11 and 12. You're signing up for the full term of the apprenticeship. So it's four to, you know, five, four to five years of you working in that industry as a minimum. So that's the student we're after. Um, as far as, the, and it's probably one of the questions that may have already been asked, does Cath West find jobs for you um, and all those things? No, when it comes to the trade pathway, the, the simple answer is, is no. It is part of the, the program that students source their own school-based apprenticeships. But of course, there's lots of support in doing that. Um, starting off with all the new um, students that will be commencing next year, will attend uh, a, a, a webinar this year. They'll attend webinars uh, in early November and we'll um, give the students and, and the parents a toolkit to get, get on their way and start looking for, for apprenticeships. Um, and, and when we say you've got to find it, you just need to be introducing yourself and getting across some of the key concepts uh, of what a school-based apprenticeship is and how it works at, at Cath West. And then we do have staff in, in particular, our industry, or sorry, our leader of industry partnerships, Tim Summers, will go and visit any potential employer uh, once you've made that first initial contact and really run through all the things an employer wants to know. So we're not expecting students and parents to become experts in apprenticeships and traineeships. We just want you to know a few key key basics. Essentially, you're there to sell yourself as a great employee. Um, and, and, and I suppose at Cath West, we're here to help you do that part of it. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a great, great program. It's a proven program. Um, I think, you know, many, you know, we're, we're a shining light across New South Wales about how school-based apprenticeships can be done well. Um, and it is through all the supports that uh, and, and those things I've outlined today. It's the flexible timetable. It's ensuring you have enough time to go work out in, in the um, in the field. And I and I forgot to add there for that apprenticeships and traineeships. It's a it's in a minimum of a hundred days um, for some trades or vocational areas that you have to work whilst you're completing your HSC, um, up to 180 days. So that's why we have to have a day off each week. And that's another reason why we have to stop school 
for two weeks each term so you can meet the minimum requirements for that uh, apprenticeship or traineeship. So um, obviously I'll be available towards the end of this um, presentation to answer any other questions, but hopefully that's been able to give you a bit of a, a taste of what the uh, trade pathway is like moving into year 11 at Cath West. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks very much, John. And uh, just a reminder that if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to use that Q&A facility at the bottom and I'll be mon monitoring that and posing uh, questions uh, to uh, our panelists. Uh, so um, I'd like to introduce now uh, Sam Borum, who is our other assistant principal. Uh, and uh, Sam is assistant principal learning innovation. And she's gonna take us now through the inquiry pathway. So as John explained, the trade pathway has been around for a little while now and has great traction and great success and many success stories and many awards that have gone with that. So one of our McCarthy campus students, in fact, uh, won the school-based uh, apprentice um, of the year uh, for the Western Sydney region um, this year. And, and that's not the first time um, a student in the trade pathways won that. We had many students uh, nominated uh, and others who also made it to the final. So uh, we're hoping with this new pathway that's now in its second year, uh, we'll be equally successful. Uh, all that we can gain from our data at the moment would suggest so. So let's find out about that. And thank you, Sam. Thank you, Kathy. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for attending tonight. Um, I know that we've received so many inquiries thus far about this brand new Cath West Innovation College inquiry pathway. Um, and I have the honor of presenting some information about it now. Um, so when we came up with the concept of the inquiry pathway, we recognized that there were many students who are in our schools, both within the Catholic system and outside that are in year nine or 10. Um, they're not really sure about what it is that they want to do when they leave school. Um, they may know that they don't want to necessarily do an ATAR or go straight to university. And they may also know that that trade is not necessarily for them. And so we know that at that point in time, you're not really sure at the end of year 10, which most of you are at right now, whether or not you'd like to stay in school or whether you'd like to go full time into work or whether you'd like to change schools. So we've created this wonderful opportunity for our students to have a flexible timetable where they can combine both school and work and industry skills and experience to make informed decisions about what it is that they would like to do once they finish school. So our inquiry pathway offers students the opportunity to complete both their HSC and a wide array of vocational education and training courses. So they can be undertaken in years 11 and 12, and they will allow you to have lots of choices when it comes to post-school options. So the Cath West Inquiry Pathway would require students to leave their current school and enrol with us and start year 11 um, from next year. I'll get you to jump to the next slide, please, Thomas. Thank you. Uh, so in completing both the preliminary and HSC years at Cath West, you would undertake year 11 and 12 over seven terms. And our students sit no HSC examinations at all at the end of year 12. However, the students will complete their higher school certificate and their vocational courses at a certificate two and three level through assessments completed within their courses. So if I can draw your attention on the screen to the right hand side where it says the subjects that students undertake in the year 11 inquiry pathway. We deliver training on campuses that are done by qualified educators and trainers, and they come from outside of the college as well as our wonderful teachers from inside of the college. So if you are in year 10 and you're interested in coming to the inquiry pathway and undertake a range of courses with us, this is the general package that is offered to students at Cath West for next year. So we undertake religious education, English studies, visual design, and visual design is a very different course, very agile course, one that ac accomplishes lots of different areas from what it is that they're doing in their um, courses. So it might be in relation to uh, media, software design, et cetera, and it caters to the needs of the students. So we deliver this training, as I said, on campus in our wonderful facilities. I'm going to show you in the next slides that are coming up some of those wonderful facilities that we have. So we bring together industry onto the campus and they work alongside you. So we've got lots of partnerships with lots of different industry organisations and they're in the areas of STEM, 
engineering, computer programming, coding, animation, gaming, um, recording, graphic design, fashion design, architecture, the list goes on. And essentially what we really do want is to bring the outside real world into our college and also give you an opportunity to go out into the real world and experience what it is that exists out there. So we also, like the Trade Pathway, have a four day school week. And that allows students the opportunity to really dive, dive deep into their projects. They concentrate on what it is that they want to do to apply their learning to the real world scenarios. So as an example, some of our students run their own businesses while they're at school and having a full day a week to undertake the training that applies to their pathway really does help them. So our inquiry students at the moment have this one day called Flexi Day. And that Flexi Day is called a Flexi Day because it's flexible based on the needs of each individual student. So some of our students might have that day to gain industry experience. They might work part-time in their part-time jobs. So I know a lot of students in years 10 and year 11 have part-time jobs and most teenagers like money. So we would like you to have another day during the week to undertake that job. Otherwise they might investigate some problems that they are learning about in school that they're curious about in the real world and they might go out into industry to learn more about it. They might, if they need to, catch up on some of the schoolwork because they may have taken some days to undertake more industry experience and they might catch up on that flexi day as well. They might get some support for their assignments from teachers here. Some students with us actually volunteer on that flexi day as well. They might be going to nursing homes, obviously not in a COVID time, but they might be going to nursing homes to volunteer or going out into the, um, the local community areas to present some ideas or perhaps give a helping hand. And some students are actually running their business and earning quite a fair bit of money at the moment, running that business either from school or from home or wherever it is they'd like to do it. So this day is essentially yours to structure however it is that you like. Thanks, thanks Sam. Just while Sam pauses there, I'm going to jump in. <laughs> because we have a question. Uh, so thank you to our first um, poser of the question. Uh, so Sam, um, through that list of courses that you showed us, we saw a lot of vet courses, but we also know at Cathwest, we offer uh, additional vet courses, depending upon uh, the particular interest and passion of the student. Uh, would you be able to speak a little bit about some of our eVet courses, please? Sure. Um, just to be clear about uh, EVET is external VET, that's what the E stands for, external. Um, and students, regardless of what school they're currently in, can apply for external VET courses. Usually they're through TAFE or some other um, external training providers like White House School of Design, etc. cetera. Um, some of our students may, um, when they start year 11, miss the opportunity that would have existed in their previous school. However, don't dismay, we do have opportunities to partner with lots of industry partners um, who deliver short courses to our our students. So again, as an example, I guess, um, we have students who are undertaking um, media or electronics um, and working on a range of different technology areas or fields of expertise. Um, so we partner at the moment with Robix Technology and Adobe. Um, LinkedIn come in and do some short courses. We've got a wonderful partnership with the Academy of Entrepreneurs that sort of supports our students who are starting their own business um, and gives those specific skills that those kids need to build their confidence to market their product and, and reach a wider potential marketplace, um, but also the Academy of Interactive Entertainment, which is a wonderful academy that allows our students to undertake short courses in a range of things. So as students, some of our students like to do some graphic design around gaming, character building, storyboarding. Um, some students are, are doing animation, um, so they need to know the nuances of creating and building an animation. And we've got some wonderful students who um, like to show off their skills and mentor other students as well. Um, so there's a range of opportunities for students to undertake courses whilst they're still a student at Cath West. I hope that answered the question, Cathy. Okay, I'll keep going if that's okay. Thanks, Sam. I just had to unmute myself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Just one thing I might mention, um, I, I think uh, it's, it's a case of students learning unfolding. So um, when it comes to your arrival at Cath West and day one next year, uh, don't expect that this is going to be immediately apparent. Um, it's, it's a case of us um, showing that we really care for you by coming to know you to then be able to um, work out the best pathway for you. And, and it's very much individualized. And one thing I, I learned today that was uh, really interesting was that 40% um, of our students go, uh, in year 12, I think it is next year, are doing a non-typical pa package. So 
it's already not very typical what we do at Cath West, and this is even making it, well, more more or less typical. I don't know if that's a thing, but there you go. I think I better hand back to Sam now. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yes, whether, whether you consider yourself a typical student or an atypical student, uh, we cater for you. Whatever it is that you'd like to do, we do try very hard to make it ad agile to suit your needs. Um, and I think when we talk about every student all the time, um, focusing on what it is they want to do, we are student driven. So for us, every teacher is out to make sure that our students, regardless of which pathway you go into, are truly known for who they are and what their passions are. Um, and we start that relationship building from the very, very beginning all of our students, again, regardless of whether it's a trade pathway enrolment or an inquiry pathway enrolment, we start with a conversation. Um, we start with getting to know you through that enrolment process. And that's why we interview. And I know interview tends to have a negative connotation, but we do start to get to know you by conversation in that first instance. Um, so jumping to the slide that's on there right now, um, learning about skills and learning how to apply those skills. Um, we sometimes hear about these skills as transferable skills, ones that you transfer from one job to the next. Um, we've developed a skills passport that allows our students to focus on these skills, both within their courses and outside of school as well. Um, so a lot of the time you guys um, in years nine and 10 and even years 11 and 12 are undertaking lots of different things outside of school. Um, you might be doing guitar lessons, you might be teaching other people things, you might be um, running the household or working part-time and gaining lots of money to support your families. Whatever it is that you're doing, we wanna give you some credit for that work that you're doing outside of school, because we know that in the workplaces and in the different household or community areas that you're living and working within, um, you are actually developing those skills. So we wanna give you credit for those. So our students develop what's called an e-portfolio or an electronic portfolio, and they collect all of the evidence that applies to these skills so that one day when they apply to university or they apply to a job after they finish at Cathwest, they can show off what they've done with evidence to potential employers. And so this e-portfolio is what students will carry with them post school. Um, so all of our students are supported as well by mentors, whether it's a teacher mentor or an industry mentor. And those partnerships are forged very much from day one as Kathy mentioned. Um, so as well for us, these mentors provide parents with a bit of support, um, carers or whatever it is that you guys are working in in your industry fields, those industry partners also get support from our teachers on the ground so that you have one port of call um, for the Cath West student um, so that you don't need to keep ringing everybody to find that information. And as I mentioned and John mentioned and Kathy's mentioned, we have no HSC examinations and that does not preclude you from going to university. We have students who have successfully enrolled into HSC courses and still gone into university before they've even finished year 12. Um, so we're starting to live the experience as well and get some really true examples of pathways for students based on the great success that they've had at Cath West at the moment. So no HSC exams is a massive win. And, and Sam, uh, you must have read someone's mind out there because that was one of, uh, one of our questions about whether, whether you need an ATAR to go to university. Definitely not. It's a great shame uh, and it's a nexus we need to break that somehow a HSC and an ATAR go hand in hand. They do not. They are entirely separate and you, you actually have to apply for an ATAR. Whereas if you're en enrolled in, a, in um, a school in New South Wales, then the, the HSC is the minimum uh, credential. So um, interestingly, a bit of uh, st a statistic on this, as it exists, only 26% of our students in New South Wales go to university via the ATAR program. And that's only gonna grow in, in light of what happened last year and what's happening right now, the early entry schemes. So um, uh, this is a, a very exciting space, uh, for really for, for the whole of New South Wales and Australia, the way in which students can access university and um, we're really going to break this open and, uh, and, and know more than at Cath West. So thanks, Sam. I'll let you go through some of our. Thank you, Cathy. Um, I'm going to show you some images now very similar to what John has done. Um, so these are some images of our facilities at the Loyola campus. So the inquiry pathway um, this year has only been offered at the Loyola campus in Mount Druitt, and that's because we've got some great facilities. So um, to start with, this is the hub. This is in the heart of the Loyola campus at Mount Druitt, and it's a gathering place for students and for staff. And the next few photos also shows the hub in action. 
So as you can see from the next image, um, there's lots of spaces. It's a bright building for students and staff to work next to each other um, and collaborate or work independently. There's a few nooks and crannies for students to work on their own as well. Um, there's many TVs and lounge seating areas and booths, um, spaces to work and learn together. We try and make it quite relaxed, as you can see from some of the images, um, to create that environment that caters for everybody's needs. Um, it also has a wonderful kitchen. It's a well-equipped kitchen, and this is the student's kitchen. And so both students and staff use this kitchen at break times. Um, it makes the hub a genuine example of workplace learning. And again, a lot of schools don't give that opportunity for students to develop the skills of having conversations in kitchens while they're making lunch. But we try very much to do that here. The next slide is the makerspace. The makerspace is a wonderful place. It's a buzz. It's a very loud, um, but also a very focused area for students to design their um, ideas. They tinker with some projects, they pull things apart, they put them back together again. And it's got some wonderful brand new technology that allows students to build and transform, even perfect their products. And they work with their peers and industry experts in these spaces. So speaking of equipment, I'll rattle off a few of them at the moment. So if you're out there thinking about what it is that your project might be at Cathwest, we have a CNC machine, a laser cutter, laser engraver, embroidery machine, overlockers, sewing machines. We've got 10 3D printers, a vacuum former TV uh, t-shirt press um, so that you can make your own t-shirts, uh, sticker machines, 3D scanners, much, much more. The list could go on and we don't have all night. Um, but this way our students are able to work in this environment and use these pieces of equipment. We teach them how to use them safely, um, but it also allows them time to, to work on their projects, to build that wonderful piece as an example of what it is that they are going to do in their post-school journeys, regardless of what it is. Um, we try really hard to encourage the students to achieve their highest standard of work that they produce. We're adamant that our students are giving the room to be creative and enjoy the learning spaces and the products, et cetera, but we want them to show off their work as well. And we have lots of cabinetry that allows students to put their work on display and get feedback. We've also got some wonderful outdoor learning spaces, very flexible learning spaces. Um, so again, allows them to go outside of the classrooms that they're familiar with at their schools. Um, but likewise, as you can see from the next image, um, there's a lot of students um, who work in these spaces. They're not really classrooms. Um, they're, they're learning spaces, they're flexible spaces. And we've tried really hard to make these spaces colorful, interactive, inviting, where the students again can work together with students, but also on their own or one-on-one -on -one with a teacher or one-on-one -on -one with an industry professional. Some of our students love to tinker in the, in the STEM lab. Um, we've got the STEM lab available to students to create some um, wonderful, different presentations um, that have to do with the science nature, but we try very hard to give the flexibility in our spaces as well um, by having stand-up tables, encourages students and staff to work ergonomically and in a variety of different forms. So we call that space there the genius bar, a bit like what Apple has in their Apple stores. Um, but as well, you can see that in the next slide, there's an image of the courtyard and students, we find students out here, not only at recess and lunch, but also working on their projects outside, again, collaborating. Now the next couple of slides are our media studio and in here we've got state of the art technology again, uh, but we've got a wonderful green screen room and probably the students more so than parents and guardians out there know a little bit more about what the green screens used for, but students produce films and projects creatively. Some of our students are live streaming to social media and launching their products professionally with backdrops that are really quite engaging and interactive. Um, and we also run some short courses in those spaces as well. And as you can see, again, the equipment is state of the art. It allows the kids to work on wonderful projects and products and having that high standard of equipment allows the industry to take us seriously um, and for students to take their projects seriously too. And the last slide I've got there is, a, is an example of one of our recording studios um, where students can do interviews, they can record their music or their um, podcasts, they can edit, publish their work, etc. And again, in a professional environment that allows the students to work on those professional products. So that's a little bit of an example. I might just put a pause on that for a sec, Kathy. Are there any questions or am I good well, to go? Um, interestingly, there was a, a, a question about how students learn at Cathwest and I uh, that question came in before you went through the spaces, Sam. So I suspect uh, in a large sense, you've answered that. But the question really focused, in fact, on year 10. So the cheeky mm. part of me just wants to say, stay tuned and come back next Tuesday. <laughs> uh, but since you're here, um, 
I, I just want to uh, ask you, Sam, if there's anything you want to add, because admittedly um, on that slide you showed with the uh, stage six uh, courses, there was also a list of the year 10. And so um, one, of, um, one of the uh, participants in the webinar noticed that they weren't really very different from what mm -hmm. other students, or from what students would be doing in other schools. So is there anything else you want to say about how students would, would, uh, would are, are learning at Catalyst? Sure, absolutely. Some of our students are engaging with courses that yes, you can do. I mean, again, NESA or um, the Board of Studies, New South Wales Board of Studies gives us an opportunity to choose from an array of different subjects. And really that's, that is the list that any school can choose from. And so our students have to undertake those courses in order to be eligible for the HSC or for year 10 completion. So we try really hard to be a little bit cheeky ourselves and look at well, what are the minimum requirements of those courses and let's undertake those minimum requirements requirements of courses in a way that suits the needs of the students. So rather than delivering from textbooks, rather than from delivering from a prescribed list of worksheets, we try to bring the outside in and try and work on problem based learning and get industry to bring us the real problems out there because some of our students, most of our students actually think outside the box. Young minds are very agile minds and they allow us, us to think in a different way. Um, and employers and industry partners really want to hear more about what students think should be a solution to these problems and that's real learning so if we at Cath West are able to undertake those problem solving um, courses or units of work then we as a teacher body can then map that work and learning back to the syllabus or the requirements for the course completion um, so where schools generally do try really hard to give kids some flexibility and work on different things for us that's the heart of what we do in all of our learning courses so um, it doesn't matter if you're in year 10 or year 11 or year 12, it's more about applying the learning to whatever it is you're doing. And even in English studies, whether you're in the trade pathway or an inquiry in year 11, we try and focus what the projects are or the activities that you're learning about relevant to the industry that you're working in. So as an example, we don't look at essay writing. Um, so generally speaking in English, um, you would be taught essay writing in years 11 and 12, probably to sit those HSC exams or to go to university to undertake essay writing courses. For us, we'd much rather focus on um, texts and writing those texts that are relevant to industries. Um, I think you'd be hard pressed to find many careers out there that require their employees to write an essay as part of their general duties. Um, but what they would be required to do are write business reports or pr do presentations effectively or write budgets um, and effective emails that communicate quickly and straight to the point. So we teach our students how to write those texts that are relevant to a range of industries rather than just getting them ready for that exam at the end of the day. So Sam, uh, I'll again let you take a breath. Uh, uh, a couple of similar questions here when it comes to accessing those flexible spaces you took us through and asking whether students can uh, utilise them on their project day and the flexi day. Uh, so uh, definitely with the project day, that's why they're there. Uh, being able to designate time for students to really pursue their passion and hone their passion and master their passion and all of those skills that we've um, been able to uh, just give you a little glimpse of in the skills passport, they need to be in exactly those kinds of spaces with access to that kind of state-of-the-art equipment to be able to, to do that. Uh, and as Sam said, on the Flexi Day, that's exactly what it is. And um, that will change over time, uh, depending upon the needs of the student, that's the critical thing. Uh, and yes, definitely um, students are able to, to come and um, and utilize those spaces. So Sam, I don't know if you want to add anything to that or if we're good to continue. You are 100% correct. Our students start in those spaces with those state-of-the-art industry relevant pieces of technology. We get industry to come in, but then we want the students to be ready for work. So we do try really hard at that point to then send them out into the real world. And that's what that flexi day is for, to both utilize the spaces, but also go out to the real world um, and apply those skills in a job. Okay, thanks, Thomas. All right. So I might just, yeah. oh, sorry, Kathy. Um, no, no, yeah. all yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, these are some of the upcoming skills. So we know that there's a lot of students out um, there at the moment who want to start engaging in Cath West. A lot of the time we have students that come for their enrolment interviews around this time of year. Um, and then we say, congratulations, you got the position at Cath West, well done. Um, and then they have to go back to their schools. Um, and for us, we want to keep 
they'll start building that relationship with you. Um, but for those of you out there who aren't really sure 100% that this is what you want, um, we've created some opportunities virtually um, over the next two weeks in the school holidays that are coming up soon. Um, the week after next commences the school holidays. And these short courses will allow some of these potential students to undertake some of this training just to dabble in it and see if it's something that you're interested in. So as you can see from the screen, how to turn an idea into a business. So whether or not you've got an idea for a business at the moment that you want, might be keen on following up. Um, if you're in years 10, 11 or 12 and you want to find out some more information on that, um, you can go and register for that. Keeping it real, understanding how to manage your money. Um, I think I might sign up for that one. Um, but all you need to know about property investing, and I know that sounds a little bit beyond a year 10 student, but as we've sort of said before, our students do think differently. Um, and most teenagers love money. And a lot of our students in years 11 and 12 are really focused on how is it that I'm going to apply my learning at Cath West to the real world and make some serious dough. Um, so that's a wonderful little opportunity for anyone of any age to come to. Um, but cybersecurity is a huge market at the moment and there's lots of employment in cybersecurity going into the future. And so um, not only will you learn how to stop hacking, um, but also maybe stop others from hacking as well. Um, but social media and marketing, um, I'm really interested in that as a person, but I know that a lot of students are really keen on doing those marketing ideas. Um, but how to get your dream job is really good for anyone who just doesn't really know exactly what it is they want in the way of employment, but may potentially go into that, um, that field of finding out what it is they'd like to do post school. Um, so please come along to one of those and register. Um, and you, if you jump to our college website, you'll find more information about that as well. I'll hand back to you, Kathy. Thank you. Thanks very much, Sam. And uh, I guess um, those courses uh, demonstrate the flexibility that we've had to demonstrate, uh, that we've had to show. Uh, I guess, um, yep, we'd hoped in that second week of the holidays. And, and by the way, another thing I meant to say is Cath West is open 48 weeks a year. Uh, and we have um, short courses every holiday period. It's been a bit stop start. We'd hope to have people on site. Uh, in the second week of the holidays, but of course that's not able to happen. So we've had to go virtual. So um, next Tuesday, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, we're focusing on pathways for year 10. So if you have anyone that you think in the future might be interested in that, especially uh, our, our year nine students, but even younger, just to get a, a bit of a taste, then uh, let them know um, about that next uh, Tuesday, 14th of September. And if Thomas, we go to the next slide. Uh, it, as I guess, um, as I guess you 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 might have done as well. Um, when it comes to being able to register for these, uh, it's a matter of um, going to our website, going to the Enroll Now tab, uh, scroll down to What's On, and um, I, I I I guess uh, that's for the enrolment into the webinar. But yes, Thomas, if you go ahead to actually enrol into Cath West, um, that's all there on our website too. Um, and um, our timeline's a little bit different from other schools. I know that um, um, really other schools are probably beginning back in March, but in reality, students who come to Cath West probably aren't quite in that headspace in the middle of term one. It's over time. So, um, Right now, there are still people inquiring, still enrolling, still having that conversation, being made offers, thinking about it, um, then uh, accepting the offer. And that is just nicely uh, bubbling along. So um, there's um, uh, uh, certainly encouragement if, if you want to enrol to, to do so sooner rather than later. That helps us in our planning. Uh, but if, if, you're, if you are thinking about this into next term or you want to share the good news with other people, then, um, yep, the enrolment process continues into next term too. So uh, next slide, please, Thomas. So I guess uh, this is the, the, the final opportunity if there are any outstanding questions. Uh, so I'll, I'll just wait another um, few moments. Um, we've got a bit of time left. Uh, if you do have any other questions, you know, I'm a good teacher. I can keep talking and tell you a story. I might jump in before you start telling a story, Kathy. Oh, okay. 
um, I just know that a lot of young people, when they finish listening to something, they like to digest it. Um, and likewise, a lot of us adults do the same thing as well. So if you um, want to re-watch any part and stop and pause and fast forward, um, we're going to be uploading this um, presentation to our YouTube channel as well. So if you just jump onto YouTube, search for Kath West, you'll be able to see our YouTube channel and have a look at all of the presentations or watch that little clip again, um, just to incite some of the passions that might be inside of you. Um, but also for us, if you have any questions that you think of um, tonight or tomorrow or in a couple of days time, please feel free to email um, the Cath West email address, um, which is on our college website. Again, if you just Google search for Cath West, um, you'll jump into our college website. So just send us an email um, and it can be any question under the sun. If the ladies um, can't answer it initially, they might pa pass it on to John, myself or Kathy or Thomas or any other member of our middle leadership team and then we'll answer those questions directly to you um, or even give you a call back so we can talk about your specific needs as well. Um, but thank you very much for the questions that have come through so far. Yes, what she said. Uh, so um, thanks very much, Sam. Thank you very much, John. Uh, thank you, Thomas. And thank you most of all for participating tonight. I very much hope that this has been helpful in assisting you to discern uh, what is best for you and uh, in whatever shape, form, school that might take, uh, we, we really wish you well for the future. And might see you next week or next year. Thank you very much, everybody.